as we will read verse 16, and we will also read verse 26. I give honor to God and to my pastor, Amen. Pastor Bowman, and to First Lady Bowman, and to Minister Moore, and to Minister Lewis, to the deacons, and all of you. I thank God for you being here this morning. Amen. Because we know if it had not been for the Lord on our side, Amen. we wouldn't be here today. Amen. That if he did not touch us with his finger of love that breathed life into us, we wouldn't be here on today. Some things we take for granted, like our next breath, but it, God doesn't have to give us that. We need to understand who he is and how powerful he is. And just because we're able to take that next breath, we need to look at it as a gift from God. Yes, Lord. We need to look at life as a gift from God because somebody didn't wake up to see this day. And when God blesses us, sometimes we forget because we're out of the situation, we still forget to say thank you, Lord, that I'm not in the place where I used to be. I remember where I came from, but God, I thank you. Amen. Thank you that you didn't give me what I deserve. But you gave, you had mercy on my soul. Amen. And you blessed me in spite of. So we'll start with Galatians 5, verse 16, and we'll read also verse 26. I say then, walk in the Spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 26 says, Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Today we will use for subject, walk in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. In this season, we see and we witness a lot of things going on in the body of Christ. And we fully understand that the requirement of the child of God is to walk in the Spirit. It is crucial that we learn how to walk in the Spirit because everything that says they are of God are not of God. Yep. Um, everything that says hallelujah, mm -hmm. everything that says praise his name, are not saved. But in order to know what we are entertaining, we need to also be filled with the Spirit. Yes, Lord. And what, what I'm learning is, in speaking with other pastors across this nation, is this week we had a conversation, and what I'm learning is, that we used to talk, that was one of the things that, when I was coming up, is the mothers, when, when you first got saved, one of the things they talked about before you even left that altar is they wanted you to tarry for the Holy Ghost. Because they realized that in order for you to live this Christian walk, you had to have the Holy Ghost. Right mm. I don't understand this generation today that think that they don't have to have the Holy Ghost and, and everything that's going on in the body of Christ that somebody in the body does not see the spirits that they're operating in. Mm. Mm. And what I find very concerning is now we have pastors that are compromising mm. and allowing these spirits to operate in the body of Christ just so they want to offend people to keep collecting oh, big tithing checks. So now I'm in a dilemma where I'm saying I don't understand why we're on the phone having these phone conversations when you know the Bible says that you are the salt of the earth. Right. If you are the salt of the earth and the salt loses its favor, then what good are you? If you are in the body of Christ and you are allowing everything to go on in the body,
body of Christ, then somebody needs to have their spirit renewed. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. This is still the house of God. Everything should not be allowed in the house of God. I don't care what we think. I don't care how we feel. If it's my mother, I will offend her for the gospel. Because the truth of the matter is, God will hold those accountable that know better and won't say that this is not right, we shouldn't be doing this, we shouldn't say this, we shouldn't walk like this, we shouldn't act like this, but yet and still we're being comfortable in allowing things to go on in the body of Christ just to make people happy, so we want to upset them. That is not God. God is calling his children into war. And whenever God calls his children into order, that means he's getting ready to move in a mighty way. Yes, Lord. But in order for God to move, I don't know if you understand this, but let me teach you something right here. The anointing flows from the head down. Mm -hmm. So that means if the pastor was out of order, the anointing couldn't flow. All right. Okay? But now the pastor is in order, but now we have somebody in the body that's out of order. The anointing still can't flow because the anointing flows from the head down. Yes. So anytime you are out of order in the body of Christ, you are stopping the flow of the anointing. All right. What happens when you stop the flow of the anointing? You're stopping somebody else from receiving their deliverance. It is very crucial that we learn to hear from the Lord on our own. Pastor can pray for us. He can intercede for us. But he can't help us to hear from God. Because only you know what God is speaking to you. Only you know what God is telling you to do. The only thing he can do is pray for your assignment. Because everyone in this building was created with the purpose that they have to fulfill. Amen. I can't fulfill your purpose. You can't fulfill my purpose. You have to fulfill your own purpose, but you cannot do it outside of the Spirit of God. Amen. If you try to do it, you will find yourself in a situation where the enemy will try to destroy you on every hand. Are you empty and void of the Spirit? Absolutely not. Because the Lord says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So the Holy Spirit lives in you. You just got to activate it. How can I activate the Holy Spirit? Ask for him. It's just that simple. Ask for him. Anoint me again, Holy Spirit. I need your power, Holy Spirit. Yes. I can't do it without you, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Jesus said it was crucial that he go away so that he can leave us the comforter. Why? Because he knew that we could not perform and do the things that God was calling us to do on our own without his presence. strange that when you're in situations with people that are empty, they call it Ichabod in the Bible, empty of the presence, a void of the presence of God, that you feel vexed in your spirit once you finish talking to them and they walk away. It is because the enemy has sent them with the wrong motive to cause you to get off track. But what the Lord is requiring of you to do is to learn how to walk in the Spirit so you won't be tripped up by the tricks of the enemy. That when you begin to hear things, you'll automatically recognize that is not a problem. You'll recognize this is not an atmosphere I need to be in. It's a setup. I need to find myself in a different place. It has gotten so now, when I first got saved, I didn't understand it. I, I didn't. It, it's a gentle walk with God. But if you desire to know it, 
you will be able to be trained to know how to walk in the spirit. It's not something that you learn overnight. It is that constant walk that God has to teach you. And it has gotten so that when I walk into the atmosphere, I can feel a spirit shift. I can, spit, I can feel when a person has been talking. I can feel when an attitude has changed. To the point where I'm like, God, what is going on? But then I said, he said, pray for him. And then he'll show me the situation. But I remember when I wasn't saved that I wouldn't pray for him. I'd go right to him and say, I know what you said and I know what you did. But now you have to go to him and say, I love you anyway. Because that is what God will give you when you walk in the spirit. I know you're lying on me. I know you're talking about me. But the love of God that's on the inside of me will cause me to love you. Because I walk in the spirit and I don't walk in my flesh. Because when you walk in the flesh, flesh will cause you to cuss folk out. But when you walk in the spirit, the spirit will cause you to pray for them. But here's how we compromise now. When about well, I ain't nobody perfect. If I, if I was perfect, I would already be in heaven. That's not an excuse not to walk in the spirit. Because we need to strive for perfection. Whether we make it or not, our mindset should be, I will not allow that mess to be a part of me. Because we're not trash cans. People don't get to come and dump their mess on us. It's taken too much for you to get to this place. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And so anytime the enemy brings that mess to you, you need to tell it to back up in the name of Jesus. Because you will not be a carrier of the garbage. If God puts you in a position, he puts you in the position because he trusts you. Thank you, Lord. What does he trust you to do? He trusts you to walk in the spirit. Even if you're the only one. Amen. There have been situations where I've been the only one walking in the spirit. Was it uncomfortable? Yes, it was. But did I care? No, I didn't. Why? Because I knew that you couldn't see what I see. Because if you did, you would have kept your mouth shut. Because the Bible says, touch not mine anointed, and do the prophet no harm. But what we get messed up is sometimes we think because we don't believe the anointing that's on a person's life, they don't walk in it. So we don't respect it. But I'm here to serve notice on you. Just because you don't respect the anointing doesn't mean they don't walk in it. Respect the children of God. You don't know what they suffered and went through to get to where they are today. And the same things you dish out is the same things you're going to receive. It is difficult to walk a saved life. But I've seen more foolishness in the body of Christ than I do in the street. And it's very concerning to me, and I have a burden for these things. Because now what I've seen going on in the churches is if one person is mad, they go and tell another person, and then they tell a person, and then the body of Christ starts dwindling because this person has a stronger Jezebel spirit than the other person. And so now not only is this person speaking, but you're telling your family members, they're stopping. They don't know enough because they're not strong enough, so now they're not coming to receive the word, and they're falling away from the body of Christ. But we don't realize what we're doing. When we hurt one another because our spirit has been wounded, it's not of God. It's a trick of the enemy. The person doesn't have to be present when you speak. The Holy Spirit is present. God is always there, especially when you confess to be saved. Do you not realize that we will be judged for every idle word? Yes, Lord. 
that comes out of our mouths. I don't know about you, but I definitely don't want to be judged for some foolishness. I want to be judged for the things that I did right towards you. I want to be judged because I kept my promise to Christ. When he called me, God, I'll go if I have to go by myself. I'll do if I have to do it all by myself. But I don't want to be found in a corner gossiping about my sisters and brothers and tearing them down and being on the phone talking about things when I really don't even know what I'm talking about in the first place. All I'm talking about is what I heard. I don't know. But when you're judging people based on what you see, I was explaining to somebody, don't judge the prostitute. Because you don't know what she has to do to take care of her family. Pray for her until the Lord saves her. Don't judge the drug dealer. Don't judge him because he's doing what he knows to do until the Lord saves him. Don't judge the homosexual because maybe he was raped as a child. And nobody has thought enough to lay hands on him and deliver him from that spirit. Don't judge the lesbian because you don't know what she went through. Maybe it happened to her from birth. And so she's just going that she knows. It's not our decision to judge people, but it is our decision to walk in the Spirit because if you walked in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and say, pray for her. Put your arms around her and love on her. But do you realize we have more people coming to church and then going home and committing suicide? And do you realize why that is? Because we have more people playing church than we do really living the life that Christ has designed for us to live. Because if you had the real Holy Ghost, he would be able to speak to you and say, so are you sure I feel like going home committing suicide? I need you to talk to her after church. You don't have to be a prophet to hear from the Lord. He can speak through anybody. He can use a baby to tell you, Daddy, you don't need to do this. Mama, you don't need to do this. The child, God can use anybody. You just have to be a willing vessel. He is desiring to use us and take us to a higher level. But it's not his fault that we haven't moved. It's ours because we haven't matured in him yet. So now we have to strip off the old man and come to a place in Christ where we're tired of the foolishness and we want to grow up in the streets. Mm. Oh my. People don't want to come in the body of Christ because they see the mess that's already going on before they come in. Yeah. Yeah. It is time for us to shift. We've been here too long. All right. It's time for us to go to a higher level. I can tell you all that I can tell you, but you have to make up in your mind that this day I will make it up in my mind to change. I will cause God to move on the inside of me because don't you know that you are not ordinary, that you're extraordinary. And the difference between you and them is you are the curse breakers. But as long as you have the mindset to continue to be a part of the foolishness, you will not go any higher. But God is choosing for you to change and to walk like Christ, to think like Christ, to put on the spirit man so that when you hug people, they feel the presence of God. Just by you walking into the atmosphere, they feel the presence of God. Just by you showing up, you make somebody feel better. Why? Because you carry the presence of God. In your mind, you ought to understand that you are a valuable person because you carry the presence of God. You're not just ordinary. You carry the presence of God. God lives in you. 
for you that's unclean. People can talk about it all day, but it won't come off until the Lord's ready to release you because that's true deliverance. Because what will happen is you'll start feeling uncomfortable in places and wearing certain things and saying certain things. That's called the Holy Ghost. But we like to give it a title, well, something said is not something, it is the Holy Ghost. It is a keeper. If you want to be kept. It is a healer. If you want to be healed. It's a teacher. If you want to be taught. It's a comforter. If you want to be comforted. Oh, it is a convictor. If you want to be convicted. But you have to get the Holy Ghost authority. To live on the inside of you. You cannot live this Christian walk without the Holy Ghost. And when I, when I asked God about this message, I said, Jesus, you know. I said, okay, fine. I'll do what you say, do, because it's not about me. All right. Thank you, Lord. You know, because some folks may get offended. But I don't care. All right, man. Because offending you doesn't matter to me. As long as I know it's not me. Take it up with the Holy Ghost. Because I don't bring you anything unless I go before him and get it. Now let me tell you something that scares me. I have watched people preach the same message over and over and over again. That concerns me. And let me tell you why. Because if you're preaching the same word over and over and over again, that means somebody's not growing. It's either you or your people. And if your people are not growing, why? And if you're not growing, why? Because every time I go before the Lord, I get a fresh word. Is that the case with you? Is that the case with you? you I can't ever go before him and he tells me the same thing twice. Why? Because you shifted. The word is not for me. The word is for you because of where you are in your life. And so if we're not careful, we'll get sucked in by flattering words. But if you got the Holy Ghost, he'll tell you, baby, pack your stuff after the offering, leave. Don't stay. But that's what the Holy Ghost will do for you. The Holy Ghost is a teacher. What does that mean? He will tell you when something is not right. Yes, Lord. It's up to you to obey. That still some small voice will speak. Don't do that. That's right. Turn it off. That's right. I had a situation a couple of months ago that happened to me with my water heater. Now the water heater is above my head and I heard a pop. And immediately I heard the Holy Spirit say, go turn it off. Turn off the gas to it. I went and I obeyed. I didn't care if I didn't have hot water. I obeyed the Lord. When I went and I did that, when the people came out to repair it, when I told the guy that I turned it off, he looked at me like I was an idiot. Well, why would you do that? That's not what you should have done. I said, I understand what you said. But what I heard was, turn it off. Well, when he went upstairs and they checked it out, they brought the thing back down and had the, the water, the eyes still been on, the gas still been in there, the house would have blown up. He said, well, well, whatever told you to do it, you did it, because look at this. He said, one flicker could have set this house on fire. Don't tell me that the Holy Ghost won't speak to you. All you gotta do is listen. Amen. 
It will keep you out of a whole lot of trouble. It will tell you, don't sign for that. Why? You can't see it. That's because somebody's going to give it to you. You want to know, but I'm trying to give it to you for free. Don't go down that street. But I want to because it will get me there quicker. You didn't realize it was trouble on that street. But you obeyed and found out when you got home. It was a gang war on that street. Lock your door. You didn't realize somebody was going to try to break in. These are the things that the Holy Ghost will do for you. I remember when I asked God for the Holy Ghost. I was in a conference where I heard Darlene Bishop preach and she preached about the power of the Holy Ghost. And she said that somebody had broken into her house and she said she couldn't rest and she didn't have any peace so she asked the Lord, please show me who broke into my house. She said the Holy Spirit showed her who broke into her house. And she called the police and told them, they said, ma'am, how do you know? She said, because the Holy Ghost showed me. Yes, Lord. But because of who she was, they didn't ask questions. Mm. They said, well, tell us who did it. And when they told them, the, whole, the, the police followed up on it. They went. They found all of her stuff. Mm. And I told the Lord, I said, that's the kind of Holy Ghost stuff. I I need 
that knocked on my door. Kevin stood in front of my car and was dancing as if I'm going to see if she know that I was the one that did it. Immediately, it dropped in my spirit. And I was talking to my mother and my sister on the phone. I said, give me one good reason why I shouldn't accelerate and run over this demon standing in front of me. My mama said, what you talking about, girl? I said, the demon that knocked on my door and took away my peace is standing in front of me right now. She said, are you sure? I said, as sure as I'm breathing. She said, get off the phone and call the police. Don't you dare turn that engine off because the devil will try his best to use you right now. They went to praying. But can I tell you, 911 didn't even answer. It was a setup by the enemy. The next day, I went and I told the woman, and I told her, I said, ma'am, I know who broke in my house. She said, who? I said, the little boy that stays up there in that apartment. She said, Richard? I said, yes. He was the one that knocked on the door. He knows who broke in my house. So she went and got him. She called the police. The police couldn't get it out of him. I said, let me talk to him. He said, what do you think you can do? that we can't do. I said, number one, I got the Holy Ghost. So no matter what he does, what he did, it's going to come out. Because I don't believe in my power, but I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I went and I talked to this little boy. As I was talking to the little boy, the dream about the snake comes back. want me to send to jail but he wanted to deal with him himself because as I talked to the mother I learned that he, you remember the man and the wife during Hurricane Katrina the man was trying to hold on to his family but he drowned and he floated away that was the husband and the son she said how could you do that to her know what we suffered. She said, ma'am, he's a straight A student. But since we've been in here, he's been caught up in so many things. She said, if you will, I said, speak no more. The Holy Ghost has already spoken up on his behalf. I told him, I said, I'm not going to send you to jail. But you will tell the truth. He went on to say to me, ma'am, they had a gun. And they knew you were in the house. And they were prepared to kill you if you were to open that door. Do you know why? They wanted to kill me over tennis shoes, an Xbox, and an iPod. But I thank God for the Holy Ghost that lives within me. Because had I not listened, I wouldn't be here today.